Hey guys, Mike here. So today, this is a video I wanted to do for a while now. <clears throat> Alright? This is going to be a video on a two-pipe steam heating system. And I haven't seen many other guys do a video on a two-pipe steam heating system in a building. Now, I have the privilege of being able to show you the components and some of the types of the uh, radiators that we're going to be dealing with. So, in this video, we're going to cover two different types of radiators, uh, the basics of a two-pipe steam system, and how a trap works. There is an older video in here from last year that was a radiator I was painting for an apartment. And I did a video on how the trap works because I hooked it up to the high pressure steam here. So that video is going to be thrown in. You'll see that video and you can see how that um, trap operates when the steam goes to it. So that's what you're going to see. And I have a little diagram here I'm going to show you. Uh, just basically going over the uh, two pipe steam heating system in the building. Because I want you to know the basics on the diagram. So... You know, when I start taking you around and, and showing you, you'll, you'll know what to look for. Look, you know, you'll just know. It'll be easier. So, let's get to that. So, here's my diagram I have. This is very straightforward. Now, as you know, we have city steam here. We don't have a boiler. I will post the link in the video to the city steam system because I'm not throwing it in in this video. This video is strictly about traps and radiators and I go over some of the riser lines with you. So this diagram has a boiler. So we're gonna start off with the boiler. The boiler makes steam, comes up here to the steam header. The steam header branches off. Say this building has two apartments for, per floor. So you'll have an A line and a B line, okay? So the A line, this is the steam, comes up, branches off with the first radiator, continues all the way up to the top, branching off. There's an air vent at the top to help the steam get up quicker. The steam branches off into the radiator. The top of the radiator works its way down through the sections into the steam trap, comes back as a condensate into the condensate return riser, which comes all the way down to the basement through a main steam trap, which is a ball swing trap like this. And the reason that it's double trapped, there's a trap here and a trap here, is because in this line, you can get flash steam. So that's why it's trapped here to make sure that if there's still steam in this line, it all comes back as a condensate to the vacuum tank. The vacuum tank is pulling that condensate down. Now off the main steam header, you're gonna have a trap and a drip leg because there's still gonna be condensate that'll form in here when the steam is going up, okay? So that condensate comes down the drip leg into a ball swing trap and back into the return line of the vacuum tank. These are the vacuum pumps that create the vacuum. These are the condensate pumps. In this case, instead of a vacuum pump pumping the condensate through a preheater and then into the sewer, if you have a boiler, it's going to pump it back as the boiler feed water and the cycle is going to continue. Okay, it's the same deal on the other side. Main steam goes up, branches off comes back into our return riser and comes back down through a trap. Trap on the drip leg off the main steam riser going up. Now I'm gonna, sh um, the next video that's gonna start out is the types of radiators. I'm gonna show you the types of radiators. Then we will go into steam traps and I will show you two riser winds with drip legs coming off of it. And that's going to complete this video. And I'll do a little outro at the end. And it'll be a basic um, overview of a two-pipe steam heating system. All right. Here we go. Okay, guys. So this is the first <clears throat> radiator I'm going to talk about here. This is a cast iron radiator. These are very typical um, all over America, mainly northern America, where the colder states are. And... This is actually original to the building. The building was built in 1928, and this is a 1928 cast iron radiator. Uh, it's cold right now, the steam isn't up. So again, this is a two-pipe steam heating system. The steam comes up right here. You have a valve. It's, okay. I think that was actually off. That's off. This is on. Okay. Comes in here. 
the steam comes through these sections here, works its way down, turns into a condensate, goes through the trap like we're going to talk about, and then goes back down to the vacuum tank. Um, well, it goes into the return riser and then down. In one pipe steam heating system, um, steam pipe will still either be at the top or the bottom and what will happen is you'd have an air vent here or there or in the, mostly in the middle that's where the air vent goes so the steam would come in the radiator the air would push out the steam heats this up and oh well yeah on the one pipe steam system this is going to be at the bottom because you're using the same pipe as the condensate return so this wouldn't be at the top it would be at the bottom and the air vent would be up here steam would fill the radiator let out the air when steam hits the air vent it'll close the radiator will just give off that heat and then that turn steam turns back to condensate and goes back down the same pipe but this is a two pipe steam heating system so steam comes in the top works its way down and goes out down the trap down the return riser and back into the um, vacuum tank so this is one right here they come in all different sizes big small flat and um, these are very popular well not anymore but uh, they work extremely well even after they turn off they still radiate heat for a good time so they're very efficient at giving off heat and holding heat so that's a cast iron radiator I'll uh, show you a big one downstairs and then we'll move on to convectors here's a big one steam pipe comes in here still hot traps there very big radiator cast iron hey guys so now you would have seen the radiator upstairs on the second floor I showed you and now this is a radiator we took out of an apartment that was leaking and we have here in the shop now it's leaking around this coupling here but this is called a convector these I believe became popular in the 1950s, maybe back as far as the 1940s. But uh, <clears throat> in new construction buildings in the 1950s, they started putting these convectors in uh, here in New York City in new construction buildings. <clears throat> and it's just fins with, this is either stainless steel or aluminum, and the tubes go right through the fins. This is, again, two pipe steam heating system so your feed is here your valve now the way this was set up is that this radiator was flipped over and this valve was below the radiator and it was either turned like this to go into the wall or straight up like that to go into the floor and the radiator would be here and then you'd have a vent down here and a grill up here there's a few different types of covers but most of them pop off or they have little doors that pop out to allow you to access the valve but it's not good like that because you can burn yourself so most of the buildings try to turn them this way so you can just reach in and turn it off or on some of them are above the radiator mine personally in my um, apartment is above the radiator and then um, at my girlfriend's apartment they're below the radiator which I'll show you but this one is set up like this so your steam comes in here into the header down the tubes, through the convector, over here, into your Sarco trap, and um, down the return. So that's a convector. I'll show you one at my apartment and one at my girlfriend's apartment, so you can see just how they're set up when they're installed. So that's the convector. Okay guys, so here's the radiator in my bedroom. So I'm at my house now, and this is also a convector, and this is a typical setup you'll see with the convector is right above that grill right there, pretty much, and that's your intake, and that's where the heat comes out the top, so it's just gravity. The cold air sinks to the floor, and the heat rises out the top. Now remember I was saying about that valve position. You can see there's the convector. This valve position comes right out of the wall like that some are below some have a door right here and they're below coming out of the wall or out of the floor and up
but this one is convenient. In fact, it's off right now. I'm going to turn it on. You'll hear the steam come through. And that's that, and it's already getting nice and hot. So that's the convector at my apartment where I live and my setup. I'll also show the convector um, in my girlfriend's apartment and how that's set up because that's set up the other way. I'll just give you, you know, I'm just going to show you one setup and another setup. Uh, just two setups because these are, the, this setup and the other setup I'm going to show you are like the most two typical setups. So that's all I'm going to show you and then I'll kind of cover our little section about convectors. But yeah. All right. Okay, so here's the one of my girlfriend's house. See, this setup's a little different. Pipe comes up from the floor, and it's right here. I thought this one was underneath, but it's above. It goes all the way down there, and the trap is down there. This is the other one. So, again, they make it a little hard to get to, because you got to open this and get your hand in there to turn the valve on this convector. That's what it looks like. So just to give you a little demonstration, this would be the low pressure steam coming from the boiler at two to three pounds. Steam comes in the top of your radiator through the top header, comes down, fills all these chambers, you can feel the heat, comes this way. Now if it's a one pipe steam heating system, the steam will just fill this radiator and then um, when it's done, usually this pipe would be at the bottom and the water would just come back and go down to the boiler. But in this case, we have a two-pipe steam heating system. So the steam comes in at the top, comes down to here, goes through a steam trap, and that steam trap takes the low-pressure steamers like diaphragms and such in there, and it basically compresses it, and then you have the condensate come back here which would either be going back to your boiler or in the case of city steam back to this holding tank and then that condensate gets pumped out and through a um, a uh, heat exchanger which um, secondary is a secondary heat exchanger for hot water and then gets eventually pumped out to the sewer see there's our condensate and that's how radiator works hey guys so now I wanted to talk about some of the traps on the radiators okay I'm going to talk about the traps on the radiators and then I'm going to go into the main traps that you will find off the steam risers return risers in a building okay so first Here's that radiator I showed earlier. This is a Sarko trap. So when the steam comes into this trap, there's an element inside. And when the steam comes, the element expands when it heats up and it lets the condensate drip out. So this is a Barnes & Jones. As you can see, this is a steam trap. So steam's coming in here. The spring element. Element heats up. When the steam comes in, lifts up, lets the condensate out, that element's right here. So what happens, here's another steam trap, is for example, it would, you would take this cap off, hold back on the pipe two inches, this element would drop inside, this is for a different trap obviously, a bigger trap, but this spring gets compressed on the top, which compresses this, okay, steam comes in here it heats it up this expands back lifts that little ball up and the condensate comes out the bottom here okay this is a brand new element it was wrapped up nicely in this little paper this is another one this is a tungstel again there's a diaphragm in there steam comes in here the diaphragm expands okay steam comes in the bottom on the top diaphragm expands lets the condensate out the bottom here this is called high pressure or high volume. 
this is just a series of discs that drop inside of a trap and there's a big orifices here and again same thing high pressure steam heats this element up element expands lets the condensate go through and out the bottom now there's sarco and there's some other makes of traps this one here is this but someone might have put the wrong one in actually some of the little boxes of the steam traps. We have some steam traps over here. It's trap elements. More trap elements. You can see we have a bunch of them on hand. New Sarco traps, old traps. Okay. So that's how those little guys work. Again, diaphragms heats up, expands, lets condensate through. This one also, I didn't go over this. This one also drops in a trap, heats the little disc up, the disc expands, and condensate comes out the bottom there. So those are just some of the smaller traps. Okay, now we'll go on to the big traps. Hey guys, so in this video, you know, as you know so far, I'm talking about the different radiators in a two-pipe steam heating system. Um, as you know, we have our district steam heating system where steam comes in from the street. I did a video on that, two videos, so I'm not going to talk about that, but I will post the link to that video in this video. In this video, I'm also going to talk about a few different steam traps and um, their purpose. This is a main steam trap that you'll find on the return riser or you'll find off of the main steam riser on the drip leg coming off, which I'll show you. This is coming back from one of our main return lines. And this is a ball lift steam trap. I have one here. Now, I will try to get these bolts undone. I don't know if I can, because usually they're very torqued down. You might have to heat them up with a torch. Now, usually the steam trap is always positioned this way with this plug on the bottom. Steam comes in the top here and condensate exits through the bottom here. And the way it works is a ball in here and it floats. So when the steam comes in, the ball is down. The steam comes in, turns the condensate. The condensate lifts the ball up and the condensate comes back out here. And when that condensate, when, when the ball lifts up enough and most of it goes out, comes back down. Steam comes in, lifts back up, condensate comes out. So that's how that ball lift steam trap works. And there's a ball inside here. You can't, you really can't see it. I'd have to take this apart. But there's one right here. Okay. And again, that condensate's coming back down into our vacuum tank here. And there's another one over here. And there's some off of the steam risers, which I will show you as well. I think we have vacuum. Well, that's the condensate coming back. So we have condensate coming back. And um, so we know we have condensate coming back. Again, that's the condensate right there. All with steam trap. Okay. You open this guy here, you'll get a mixture of flash steam and condensate. See, we have condensate and we have steam. Okay. All right. I'll take you to the next one to show you off the bottom of the steam riser and the return riser. Okay. Now it's also important to note. Anytime you have a steam branch that has raw steam going through it that has to get to another area off of a main steam line like this one here and if it is below the main steam line and then goes back up you need to have a trap off of it because condensate will collect and you can get damaging water hammer for that so anytime it goes below its level it needs a steam trap so if you have a steam line that's running here and you need to bring it uh, below a certain area and then it's going to go back up got to have a steam trap so right here we got a little sarco ball lift steam trap and that comes off the bottom of this steam branch line and goes back to the return this is very important to have for um, the prevention of water hammer or any such things or condensate collecting in another area and, and so forth so that's just very important to mention right there all right guys so i'm in the gym to show you the main steam line here comes over 
This is steam riser going up to a line of apartments. You have the main steam valve here. This is a return line. Okay, these are return lines for the condensate. I'm going to walk over here. Okay, this is the main steam riser going up to this line of apartments. And off the bottom, now not all of them in the building have this, but it does have a drip off here in the bottom with a ball lift or ball swing um, steam trap comes over and goes back into the steam, uh, the condensate return. So the water that accumulates from that steam going up settles here in the bottom and will come here in the trap and out. If we walk over here, same thing, main steam riser ball lift steam trap off the bottom. Also, it seems that we have condensate line. Is this a steam line? No, this might be, this might be a gas line. I think there's kitchens in this line. That might be, that could actually be a gas line. Yep, that's a gas line. Okay. <clears throat> should be, uh, that should be color coded. That's the, re the condensate return riser. So that's the return riser that goes straight up and all the radiators branch into that and that's where all the condensate comes down and goes back. But off the main steam riser you'll have a trap, a drip leg and a trap to let that condensate out of there. Alright guys, had to come out for some fresh air. So, that concludes this video on the two pipe steam heating system. I really hope that you guys found it informative and um, you learned something from it and you found it easy to follow and um, you got the basics down. So that concludes this video for two pipe steam heating system. Uh, if there's anything I missed, please let me know. If you have questions, please let me know. And thank you guys for watching. Mike out.